In this video, we will talk about two basic click models that are used to build all other advanced click models. And those two basic click models are a position-based model and a cascade model. And uh, most other click models, at least those that are based on the probabilistic graphical models, they are either uh, they either extend the position-based model or uh, the cascade model. So we'll start with the position-based model. And let's say we have this um, list of search results. They come from the uh, largest Russian search engine, Yandex, uh, and we collaborated with them. They released a couple of huge data sets with clicks. So let's say uh, these are search results that we have. And these are two clicks that we observe. How do we want to model these two clicks. So first we randomly choose a result out of five and we randomly chose the third one. The first thing that we assume a user does is that he or she reads the snippet or as we call examine, examines the snippet. So reads the title, the URL, reads this, this short snippet. And this is called the probability of examination. And uh, that depends on the position. So for different positions, we have different probabilities of examining documents. And if we, after examining, we think, okay, we probably like it actually, it looks like a good result for our query here, then we make another decision and uh, we decide whether we are attracted or not by this snippet given our query. So you can see it, as tossing two types of coins. First, you toss a coin from a set of examination coins. And if the coin is had, you toss another coin from the set of, we call them attractiveness coins. And then if that coin is had, you click. So you click only if you read the snippet and you find it attractive, you find it relevant to your query. And then you continue randomly to, let's say, the first result. Again, you toss a coin to decide whether you examine or not. And let's say that coin shows, had you examine? And then you toss another coin to decide whether you're attracted or not. And again, had you click. And then you continue the same way with the fourth result, the fifth, second, and so on. So again, look, we have five different coins to decide whether we want to read a snippet on each position. And you can imagine that probably the examination, the, the probability that we want to read a snippet of the first result is higher than the probability of reading the snippet of the fifth result. And then we have another set of coins uh, for each result. And these coins do not depend on the position. They only depend on what we read and how it relates to our query. So as long as we read the snippet on the position four, our decision whether we are attracted or not doesn't depend on the position anymore. It only depends on the snippet and on the query. So here we say query and document four. Now let's formalize this a little bit um, and go to, to, yeah, to probabilistic notation. So first, uh, the terminology. Again, by examination, we mean that a user reads a snippet. So a user examines the snippet. And we call it E and uh, the random variable is binary, either zero or one. And it depends on the rank R. So it's ER. And the position-based model that's specific to the position-based model, we call PBM. Uh, the PBM says that examination only depends on rank. So basically the probability that the examination of the position R is one equals to the parameter that depends on the position. So going back to our example, we can replace this five uh, probabilities with five parameters. And if you have 10 results, you have 10 parameters. If you have 100 results, you have 100 parameters. And each parameter depends on the position only. And that's actually why it's called position-based model. Now let's replace this part as well. Uh, again, by attractiveness, we mean that the user wants to click on a document after reading the snippet. So basically the decision doesn't depend on uh, the position. It only depends on the querying document, but I'll say about that later. 
So we denote it with a random bina uh, binary random variable A, and it depends on Q and D, where Q is query and D is document. And um, according to BBM, as I said, this attractiveness depends on the query document pair. And actually this is pretty much the same for every click model that you will see. So this rule doesn't really change much from click model to click model. And we write it as follows. So the probability that we are attracted by this document or snippet given a query is a parameter that depends on a query and a document. And you can imagine, of course, that um, we have millions and millions of query document pairs. Let's say we have 1 million documents and we have 100 queries in our system. So we will have 100 million parameters like this. So that's a lot. And uh, when we replace this with parameters, it becomes alphas for the same query because the query is the same and for different documents from D1 to D5. By the way, I'll mention it here that uh, since this uh, parameters here depend on the query and document, and we will have to learn them, by the way, I'll tell you how to learn these uh, two sets of parameters, examination and attractiveness. Since we learn them from uh, clicks, from uh, the real clicks from users, basically uh, these models are unable to predict attractiveness of uh, documents that were not seen in the training data. So if you see a new query or a new document, you will have no idea what their alphas should look like. Now, uh, to summarize uh, this model, we say that the examination probability of a document at rank R equals to the parameter that depends on the rank. The attractiveness of a snippet to the query depends on, on that snippet and the query, and we click if and only if we examined the snippet and we found it attractive. And now I'll try to explain why we actually build this model. What's the point, right? Okay, we have these three equations, so what? And the point is, remember we build models because we have bias in clicks. Clicks are biased. So now we are trying to divide the biased click here on the left into two events. And we believe that bias is observed by the examination component and the whole, the true click, the true relevance is here in the attractiveness. So basically, if we are able to infer these two parameters from clicks, we believe that this is the real relevance, unbiased relevance. Of course, in reality, that's not true. It's hard to remove all the biases, but uh, you can come closer to that. So instead of using clicks that are biased, you can use attractiveness that is believed to be less biased. So for example, if you want to add clicks as a feature for learning to rank, instead of clicks, you can add attractiveness as a feature. Or if you want to use clicks to do, let's say online uh, uh, learning to rank, rank or counterfactual learning to rank. Again, you can use alphas instead of clicks to be unbiased. So that's the whole idea behind the models. But let's proceed with the, the, the position-based model first, and then uh, let's turn to cascade model. Now, uh, you've seen this notation when we discussed uh, topic models. This is again, this is called plate notation. It's used in probabilistic graphical models. I remind you that the circles here, uh, ellipses, mean random variables. The shaded one means observed and clicks are observed, while examination and attractions are not observed. Here, uh, I copied it from our book. So instead of D document, we use U URL. Sorry about this. But basically this picture means that the click depends on examination and on attractiveness. These are independent of each other. And this happens for every document. So this plate, the rectangular plate says that for every document, this um, dependency happens. Now, this is the position-based model. And what's the problem with this position-based model? Now, the problem is actually in the first rule. The first rule says that um, the probability of us as users examining snippets on different positions only depends on the position. 
And in reality, that is not really true if you think about it. So let's look at these two clicks. For example, if your first document was very relevant to your query, would you go further and do another click? Maybe not, actually. So maybe your second click should depend on whether the first click happened. Or, well, of course, ideally it should depend on the relevance of previous documents. But since the relevance is not known and only clicks are known, we would like to do something like a cascade where, again, the clicks that happen above affect the clicks that happen below. And that's the cascade behavior. And the cascade model looks like this. Uh, we start from the first document always, because in the position-based model, we could start with any document randomly. So in the cascade model, we start from top. That's the rule. That's actually how we usually do the search ourselves. We examine documents one by one, so we don't jump over the documents. We don't go from one to three. We always go one to two to three to four to five. We can't go to from one to four, from one to five. That's impossible. We examine one by one. Now, if we click on a document, then we just stop. Essentially, under the cascade model, this picture cannot even happen. It only stops the first click. And that is obviously a drawback, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So if we click here, we stop and then we don't go further. And if we don't click, we just continue with probability one. That's it. And uh, how does it look in terms of uh, the rules that we saw for the position-based model? Let's apply them to the cascade-based model as, uh, as well. First, again, Click happens if and only if we examine a snippet and the snippet is attractive. So this rule doesn't change. What is the probability of a user being attracted to the document? And that also doesn't change. We also say it's alpha that depends on the query and the document. So this is exactly the same as for the, uh, for the position-based model. But the differences come here. First, we start from the top. And the uh, probability of examining the first result is always one. Now, uh, how do we define the probability that documents are examined one by one? We uh, define it using the conditional probability. What is the probability of examining, let's say, the document at position four, given that we didn't examine the document at the position three? So position three was not examined because zero. What is the uh, probability of examining a document in position four? Well, since documents have to be examined one by one, this is impossible. We cannot examine document four if we didn't examine document three, so this will be zero. The next thing we have to encode is we stop after a click. So now we clicked on the positions three, let's say. How probable is it that we examine position four? Well, since we stop after a click, it's completely not probable. So it's zero. We don't examine document four if we clicked on document three. And finally, how do we encode that we continue if we examined document three and we didn't click on document three? So examined, didn't click. How likely are we to examine document four in that situation? And by default, we must do that. So it's one, the probability of that is one. So you see that actually in this case, in the skate model, we don't have parameters that depend on position. In the BBM model, we had gammas, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. And here we only have alphas. So this model is in a sense simpler and can be first simpler, but it's uh, less expressive because it cannot go beyond one click. And there are many extensions, well, a few extensions of the cascade model that deal with this deficiency of the cascade model, but we will not discuss them in this videos. Just, well, we, we will touch on one of them uh, in the application section. And uh, to conclude with the click models, to conclude with cascade-based model first, I'll show you the uh, plate notation for that. And now we have multiple plates because there is the cascade dependency. So we have documented position R minus one, and we have a document position R. And if we forget these two dependencies here, it's very similar to PBM, right? So click depends on the examination and on the attractiveness. But now what we add is that the examination depends on the previous examination. So we only examine document at rank four 
if we examine the document brain three. And it depends on the click because we only examine a document brain four if we didn't click on document at rank three. So these two arrows are added in the cascade based model compared to PBM. In summary, the position based model, the good thing about it, and I think that's really the breakthrough that is used by uh, most click models, it separated examination from attractiveness. And in this way, it tried to remove bias into examination. So the bias should go into examination and all the real relevance should go into attractiveness. The problem with it is that it doesn't take into account previous clicks, which may be very important. And actually they are very important in reality. That is addressed by the cascade-based model. It actually um, creates this dependency between previous clicks and next clicks. But the problem with it is that only one click is allowed. But uh, anyway, so with this, you should have an idea of what uh, basic click models look like. And if you're interested in learning more about them, of course you can go and read the book. <laughs>